In this video, we will review some evolutionary adaptations of the animal digestive system, going from anatomical modifications to mutualistic relationships with other organisms. Let's start at the beginning of the digestive system, in the mouth. The type and assortment of teeth are a reflection of an animal's diet. Teeth adaptations follow when an animal eats. Carnivores have incisors and canine teeth, used to kill prey and rip pieces of flesh. Some molars in the back of their mouths serve to crush food. Herbivores, on the other hand, have premolars and molars with broad surfaces used to grind plant material. Incisors and canines are present in some herbivores, but they are modified for beating off pieces of vegetation. Omnivores often present teeth for eating plants and meat. Incisors and canines will be at the front, then premolars and molars are located towards the back. Some animals, like venomous snakes, have fangs that are adapted to inject venom into their prey. The stomach and intestines also present some adaptations, especially regarding their size. Large carnivores, for example, have expandable stomachs, allowing them to wait a long time between meals and to eat as much as possible when they catch prey. A python, for example, will use its expandable stomach to eat a whole gazelle. In herbivores and omnivores, the digestive tract is often very long compared to carnivores. This is because plant material is more difficult to digest, so a longer tract provides more surface for absorption. If we compare the alimentary canal of a carnivore like a coyote and a herbivore like a koala, we will see that both animals are similar in size, yet the digestive systems are completely different, with the koala presenting much longer intestines adapted to process tough plant material. Animal digestive systems also present mutualistic adaptations. Recall that mutualism refers to the relationship between two species where both of them obtain benefits. The major mutualistic relationship regarding the digestive system is with the microbiome, a collection of all microorganisms in the body. Previous studies have estimated that there are between 10 and 100 trillion bacteria in a human digestive system, with more than 400 species. Mutualism with bacteria helps in vitamin production development of intestinal epithelium, and for proper functioning of the innate immune system. However, there are differences in the microbiome of each individual, often arising from diets, disease, and age. Notice in the diagram how infants present a significant proportion of actinobacteria, a group of bacteria associated with children under milk and formula diets, compared to adults, where most bacteria are from the order firmicutes involved in energy resorption. One key bacterial species associated with the human digestive system is Helicobacter pylori, a microorganism shown to disrupt stomach health by forming ulcers. Infection by Helicobacter pylori also leads to elimination of other microorganisms, as shown in the graph to the right, significantly altering the gut microbiota. These changes in the microbiome often lead to the onset of different diseases, such as obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Finally, we have mutualistic adaptations strictly for herbivores. A large number of these animals lack enzymes that process cellulose, a major component of plants. However, there are microorganisms with enzymes that digest cellulose living in the alimentary canals of these herbivores, specifically in fermentation chambers. The products of fermentation are then absorbed by the herbivore, with some products like sugars also serving as nutrients for the microorganisms. Two interesting adaptations of this type of mutualism includes coprophagy in rabbits, where bacteria live in large intestines, causing fermentation products to be lost with feces. Therefore, rabbits feed on some of their feces to recover the lost nutrients by passing the waste through the alimentary canal for a second time. Ruminants like cows, deer, and sheep also present an adaptation called ruminant digestion, where the stomach has multiple chambers specialized for different processes. Food first enters the rumen and reticulum where bacteria digest cellulose. Then, the cow regurgitates and rechews the food breaking down fibers. The swallow cud then passes to the omasum where the water is removed. And finally, it passes to the abomasum for digestion by the cow's enzymes. This provides the most efficient absorption of nutrients in these animals. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. 
However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Images and diagrams are from Campbell's Biology 11 edition unless otherwise stated. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all of the details you need to know about these services in our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For many information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.